greatest yes, Lord. honor to represent you. We thank you for one of the most sacred things, and that is the heart of you, the Almighty God. In your heart, you share yes. your secret, which is your heart. And you speak it before things take place in the earth through your servants. Yes. And we're honored to go back over the things that you've said. Lord, much is happening. And with that, we want to say thank you. We thank honor you, Lord you. Jesus. We, we honor yes. your heart. We pray that tonight, Lord, the people would be lifted in their faith, that they would be given hope, and there would be a powerful anointing, Lord, that would destroy yokes of bondage and undo every heavy burden. Thank you for speaking. Thank you for the honor of representing you as your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, why don't you go ahead and be seated. Smile at somebody if you can, you know. Um, I have a dentist appointment coming up soon just for <laughs> annual cleanup. So, Brenda, how do they look? Yeah, they're, yeah, good? Well, so, they're looking good. good. By the way, I don't know how to do this, but you're looking beautiful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you look beautiful. She just looked, that's a great color on her. But anyway, um, I know I'm embarrassing you, but you can't Probably. elbow me and tell me to <laughs> knock it off. See? Uh, but anyway, we welcome you. And those of you that are listening by the telephone, uh, you're uh, always very special to us because yes. that's how we started. Thank Absolutely. you, all of you that's that are right. watching. Uh, to Matt's point, social media, make sure that you know how to get on uh, onevoicetv.net. That is our network. We can't be censored. We can't be canceled. And uh, the connection's solid there, so I can't speak for the other ones. So that's a, a good backup plan. I want to mention this also, Good Friday service. We are going to be praying for your needs. There is time, Pastor Brenda, for them to send in their prayer requests. Yes, yeah, so if you're on the so, mailing list, One Voice Ministries, you'll get our mailing. And, of course, we always send a monthly mailing out, a letter. We put yeah. our heart into it to pray for you, minister to you. That's right. And, of course, um, there'll be a way you can submit. We did something a little special. You should be getting that in a, about a week or so. And so be looking for that. But you can also submit prayer requests online. And we always, on Good Friday, lay out these prayer requests quest believe god we're believing for miracles yep. and i mean every event we believe for miracles but i think this is the time to believe for speedy miracles you know instantaneous moves of god i, I think about how many times in scripture where it says when Jesus ministered to somebody, it says immediately yep. they were healed. Well, why not if, why does the Bible put that there? Because uh, every miracle has to drag out for a year. I don't believe that. I believe we're in the time of immediate, in one night, Israel was delivered. Come so on, what can God do small. and for our nation? So, yep. yes, get your prayer requests in on the website. And talking about the nation, when I, how many of you watched, uh, I was on Flashpoint Monday and Tuesday. God told me to add Mondays for a while. And I'm not sure how long that's going to go. It is a commitment, but hey, it's been a commitment since the time we started. We're almost going on four years of doing it right. almost every week, and I thank God for it. But um, Dutch, not Dutch, uh, Lance was saying last night, as well as Michelle Bachman, they were talking about fasting and praying, and it kept hitting me. How many of you watched that uh, last night? It's powerful. And so those of you that are, that are watching and, and those of you that are listening, God got on me, uh, and, and as I was driving to the house, uh, after Flashpoint, Brenda, God had already been speaking to her. Yes. We are going to do once a month in our church on a Wednesday. We're going to start fasting and praying for America every, uh, one Wednesday a, a month. And we're going to meet corporately for America. And uh, I'll be part of that. We're going to pray in precatory prayers. And then lastly, I want you to, to get here September. I know, I'm doing a lot of announcements on purpose because there's a lot going on. But also I want people to get on and have a moment because we've got a lot to get into that's very yes, serious. Good stuff. So I want to remind you, September 12th through the 15th, those of you from out of town, make a sacrifice to get here. This uh, opening the heavens conference is going to be different. How many were here? We're going to talk about the prophecy from uh, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. I mean, I had no idea. Is that my camera right there, Ryan? Or is it this one? I'm going to go over here. Okay. But uh, anyway, I want, it was a powerful prophecy. The Spirit of the Lord was very strong. And uh, I heard in my spirit, let the lion's roar of justice be heard. And that's going to be kind of the theme of what we're going to talk about at Opening the Heavens. And I've invited guests this year that are going to deal specifically with um, things regarding America, getting us ready for what I believe is our reset. And so we've already got Sammy Rodriguez is confirmed, Tony Suarez, Tim Sheets is coming. Um, 
we've reached out to Dutch. You know, he's a very busy man. We'll, we'll know something soon. Um, we're going to have Robert Henderson is, is confirmed as well. And uh, we've got a few other speakers. Brenda and I will be there. And then, of course, Flashpoint will kind of kick it off. And uh, there's something else that is kind of in discussion. That if it happens, it's huge. Okay, so we'll just see what God does. And so we're, we're praying about all of that. Well, let's get into tonight. Amen. I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 31. And the Holy Spirit kept nudging me to go back to a prophetic pulse. Now, for whatever reason, when I looked it up, it said uh, prophetic pulse uh, February 2020. So I'm not sure if, if that is the actual time or if it was really February 2024. 21 and I'll I didn't have time today to I didn't want to fuss with you know trying to figure which one it was I just wanted to get what I felt like God was saying to me and move on so you know just hang with me whichever one it was but I want to talk to you about a few dreams I'm going to set up the pulse tonight with some dreams that are uncannily cannily what's the word Brenda uncanny uncanny I didn't know it at the time when I publicly shared these dreams. You'll recognize these dreams, those of you that have been following. Um, and you'll know that these are documented dreams. And I'm, I'm going to make them very quick, so I'm going to kind of paraphrase them. But Proverbs 6, 31 says, But if the thief be found, all right, he shall restore sevenfold. Now you see the word, two things. The thief has to be caught. We didn't know how bad the thief was. And I didn't take the moment to try to figure it out with God, you know. Um, and so anybody that got on afterwards and called all the intercessors, all the prophets wrong, people that apologize, they don't realize that you really didn't need to do that. Uh, because it's true. We're finding out more and more just how much the thief was a part. And so, uh, but it was very obvious what, what took place. So you got to see that word, but you also have to see the word restore. This is where we're heading. This is why when you look at the prophecies, it's going to tell a story. Uh, I remember fasting and praying that day. I said, Spirit of God, what would you say? I have to stand before the people. He said, Hank, stay with the story that I have been saying through you and through the ministry that I've entrusted to you. I said, okay. So that's why I don't change. I stay with what he said. Um, so let's talk about this. So there was a dream in 2016. And this was an interesting dream, and I don't want you guys to feel like you're up here just kind of looking, so I'm going to go very quick. In 2016, many of you would remember that I was taken into a room, this was before the election, and I saw uh, Soros. Uh, he had a lot of money, and he was calling in. He called in Obama, he called in Hillary, he called in Kamala, he called in Bernie Sanders because he had a socialistic agenda. And he wanted to somehow, how could he thrust Kamala Harris uh, to the forefront? Because he wanted what each of those people represented. He wanted to do something and put his money behind it. In 2017, I had a dream that I was uh, in the middle of a baseball game. How many know America is known for apple pie and baseball? And in the dream, I saw a scoreboard. And on the hill was this big screen TV. It was the biggest big screen TV I ever saw. And President Donald Trump was sitting in a place of power again. And people were celebrating 2018. 2019, I had a dream that Brenda and I were part of the uh, Democratic Convention. Uh, we got kicked out. Remember, Biden pointed at me and said, I don't like that guy. And re remember what was happening? I can't imagine why we'd want to go. Well, but remember... That and those of you that are watching, I was behind the curtain, and, and uh, Hillary was there, Obama was there, uh, uh, Michelle, whatever they call her, was there, uh, his wife, supposedly there, and uh, there was Hillary Clinton, uh, and they were, they, were, they were mad. They were in the back, and this is in 2019, they were mad, and they pushed this guy, Joe Biden, out, and remember... Uh, and Kamala Harris, they pushed both of them out. He stumbled and fell. Remember that? And he kept falling. This was in 2019. And he hit the pulpit, and then he started stuttering over his words. Remember that? You all look at it. How many of you raise your hand so they can verify it? These are... You can go out to the uh, prophetic pulses. Every one of them is out there. You can go out to, I believe it was February 2020 or 2021 where I share this, this stuff. And these are documented dreams ahead of time. Then there was the November 4th. This one was uh, where Brenda went down to pray in real life. Um, and uh, I stayed up and I was praying in my bed. And 
I saw the face of who they called Joe Biden change two to three times. And then it morphed into the face of the devil. And he began to talk about what he was going to do to America, the devil. I mean, I've seen the devil before, but that was the first time I ever heard uh, his, you know, the face of the devil. Um, it wasn't Biden. It was the face of the devil. And uh, he was speaking. And all of a sudden, I couldn't move. Brenda comes in the room. I said, Brenda, uh, I can't move. What, what time is it? She said, because the Holy Spirit said, note the time. I said, Brenda, what time is it? She said, 4.45. And I heard God say, four more for 45. Remember that? Immediately went into another vision. Uh, December 1st of 2023, this was in Pasadena, California. I was uh, prophesying and declaring in precatory prayers. I was decreeing over America, and I felt somebody mocking me. I turned around. It was Obama, and I looked at him, and God said, speak my word to him. For the court of heaven has come, my justice has come, and I began to speak, and all of a sudden everything began to break apart, and I knew that what they had been trying to do and everything that they've been trying to do is falling apart. It will not stand in the land. <laughs> January 2024, I had a dream, and uh, this was uh, when I was in a huge uh, auditorium. I've shared some of this already. I was in a huge auditorium. I believe it was the world stage. This ministry obviously is on the world stage by God's doing. And uh, the back door opens up and it was Biden, the guy that, you know, I don't like, anyway, just to say, you know, fake stuff. And they were bringing them up front, uh, a whole bunch of people to bring them into account for what was being done. And God said in the dream, I was to decree the verdict from heaven. And I've never, in that dream, I never ever said the kind of legal terminology, but I knew that God was bringing his justice. And after it happened, uh, this, the, the people came and they took him out of the room and who knows what happened after that. A man was on the side of the stage, whispered to me, and I believe it was an angel, but he looked like a secret service guy. He said, hey, uh, the king wants to meet with you. I said, who, what king? He said, what are you talking about? He said, Jesus. I said, Jesus wants to meet with me. He said, yeah, he wants to meet with you and Brenda in a side room. He wants to reward you and those because you have told the truth. You have stood for the truth and you have stood for this country. So there's a reward. Lastly, um, we're going to set this up. I'm, am I going too long? No, this okay. is amazing. So then February 21st, 2024, Paula Dean's Restaurant, Nashville, NRB. I'm sitting there and Tony Soros. With a mouthful can, of chicken. Yeah, Tony Soros can verify. No, it was actually meatloaf. Meatloaf. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> and there. Chicken the, and chicken and fish. Yeah, Brenda knows this happens uh, a lot where sometimes I'll be out and there will be an angel that will show up. And, it's called the restaurant and, anointing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. So anyway, it was meatloaf, Brenda, because meatloaf is better than That's chicken true. and I would have okay. chosen. So anyway, I was there and I was, grabbing, I was grabbing for the meatloaf and Tony saw it. Tony Soros was sitting right here and he saw it. I went into a vision. And uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know what I did with the meatloaf. All I know is there was a bite out of it when I was, so I don't know if somebody ate it. But uh, I was taken into a room, and I saw uh, Soros again, and I saw some other people. And I began to see Obama and uh, Barack and, and uh, the other person he's with uh, was there. And uh, there was uh, Kamala was there, and uh, they were in panic mode. And uh, I saw Gavin Newsom, and I saw somebody also, uh, and, they, and, and uh, Michelle was there too. And there was a young person uh, that they were trying to uh, get ready. It was, it was a very young person, looked like a man uh, also. They were trying to come up with a new solution. And uh, there was also a woman there. And I could tell that there was stuff going on behind the scene that they would love to have play out because what's before them isn't working. And so I just want you to know that all of these things God has been indicating, you can't make that up right. about the different dreams. How many can see the story that God is telling us? But notice the ending. Every time there's a celebration, every time God is not finished with what he said. So let's go to the first thing. Let's go to the first prophecy and let's talk about this. Let's set it up. Anthony, I'm going to give it to you and Terry, and we'll, we'll get into tonight's pulse. All right. Thanks, Pastor. And I want to reiterate what you were just talking about, how God has been telling a story, because how many know it's easy to get caught up in what we call the uh, latest and greatest headline syndrome? 
where we just think that everything that's happening or reported is isolated, like some haphazard thing that just happened, kind of like, you know, the wildfires that just suddenly sprang up in Texas. We'll talk about that later. You know, but what I'm trying to say about all of that is God is a covenant God. So it isn't just random that Pastor Hank would stand up on Sunday and prophesy and the Lord would say that the Supreme Court is going to make a decision that is going to cause many to become angry and it's going to bring up great discussion, right? It's pointing back to what God's heart has always been, and that's been the anointing of preservation over America. Can I say this? What I love about that is uh, we're going to talk about that prophecy. Brenda, do you want to tell us what happened? I was not even planning on prophesying on Sunday morning because our dog, our little Shih Tzu, became Poop Tzu, and he, he had diarrhea all <laughs> night long. And I was so tired, and I knew I had to do two services. I was like, Brenda, we're going to do communion. And God said, minister about forgiveness. And Cadence, though, which is our niece, Christy's daughter, pressed the Well, point. yeah, she said, so then what you um, up. Katie had said, Mom, we need to sing Lion Roar today. And that was not on the list. And she was determined that that was, and you know how that song came forth, Pastor Shane, those of you that were here, let's roll with that. And had she not had that, you know, and I say that because I think it's important because, you know, people, you know, I know you guys don't think that, but we don't get up here and like script the service. I mean, we have sort of a plan, but what comes out comes out in the moment. And so, you know, pastor doesn't go, well, gee, I'm going to prophesy today. I mean, most you know, of the time I have no clue uh, right. what the Lord is going to say. What happens is his presence comes. And when she and said that, it just dropped mm -hmm. in the room. And, and it's not like you even always prophesied that song, even though that song can make everybody want to prophesy. <laughs> um, but the point is, That's is scriptural. The line it is, is, who is it's true. true. Who can but prophesy? But the point being <laughs> is, I mean, just had she, you yeah. know, had that drop in her spirit and then that word that word came, came forth there was, was very, the i mean and here's what i love man, about it i've heard a lot of prophecies that one yeah. was profound for this moment well and people ask me all the time well pastor hank you know the prophecies are coming to pass i said you know i look at that and i and i'm always grateful to god and i honor him because i've always said to him lord your heart you know that's why it says in amos 3 7 he doesn't do anything in the earth unless he reveals his secret. Notice it's singular. And I asked the Lord about it one day. I said, why is it singular? He said, that's my heart. And he said, it doesn't become plural. More revelation is not given at high levels unless you capture my heart and, and I can trust you with my heart. That's why I don't share everything I know because I have to protect and steward over his heart. So when God said that on Sunday, we're going to get into it. It was very interesting to me. We always think of the breaking news of the secular media. But that was God's breaking news. There was no yes. indication that they were going to rule. And I thank God for the Lord. I thank God for Cadence because when we went out uh, by the pulpit, that's when the Holy Spirit uh, began to speak. So go ahead and, and set this up again, Anthony. I think that would be great. No, that's awesome. And what I wanted to say, too, about what Cadence did, I think that's also what's on God's heart is the children, this next generation. Yeah. And this is a prophetic indicator of what God did with Cadence, that God is going to use your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews in this same way. So you better start paying attention to what they are saying out of the mouth of babes because it is God. And so true. What, uh, what, how we're setting this up is you know, going back to the fact that this isn't just you know, uh, breaking news in the sense that this is just a one-off thing. You know, the difference between prophecy and, and a prophetic mantle is when you look at prophets, you know, they're usually prophesying the same thing over and over and over and over. Why is that? Because that's God's heart. And he's reminding you that he doesn't change and his promises remain the same. So I believe you guys are going to be even more committed in what God is doing. And you're going to leave this place extremely, extremely um, encouraged. Because, again, there's prophecies that we're going to talk about right now um, from 2016 showing that what is happening now has always been what God has desired and what he said he would do. So, Pastor Hank, if you don't mind, we'd like sure. you to read this. This sure. is actually another plug to OTH. This prophecy is from September 15th, 2016. So this was opening the heavens of 2016. So you have to get in the room because God moves in such a unique way during OTH. He does. We're going to share some of those prophecies from even last year. You want me to read it? Yeah, okay, if you don't mind reading. September uh, this is 15th, 2016. Slide A1, yes. Okay. 
God says, and I'll read the part in red, I've chosen, says the Spirit of God, to rise upon America at this time. And I've come to be an irritant to those who oppose. And I've come to be an irritant to those who have mocked and shook their fists, thinking they can push me out of this nation. All right, is that... Yes. Well, uh, else you if you can go to the next part, uh, a part with, uh, where it says, and there was a time. And there was a time when I irritated Pharaoh. I needed bold leadership. I needed those who would speak for me and not for themselves. And I needed those who would not have an agenda of their own. So I sent signs and wonders and raised up those who would carry out my will. So I found the same. What's interesting here is the part where it says, and there was a time when I irritated Pharaoh, I needed bold leadership. So here's the other thing to pay attention to with prophecy. There's usually a narrative in there where God will use a, I guess you could call it like a mold. Same over and over and over. A mold like, not like moldy bread, but he will use the same type of example over and over and over. In that case, it was Pharaoh. But this is why they can't get rid of 45. He represents that same bold leadership that yes. confronted Pharaoh, and we're seeing that now. Let's go to the next slide, slide two. God says, watch what I do to irritate this nation, as suddenly they realize that they cannot stop me. For you are coming into a season where laws that have been penned by the arrogance of men shall what? Swiftly, Swiftly change. change. And there are those who have stood and said, we'll continue to push God out of school. The Lord says, watch what I do to irritate them to where they have no choice no chance, no choice, for there'll be a sound of the young that shall arise across this land. And they will say, we want God. We want Jesus back in our schools. And I will listen to them, says the Lord. So now they discuss the health of the candidates. But what about your nation? It has been sick. But God says, I've heard the prayers of a righteous rebellion. Come on. Mm. And there is coming another revolution. But this one is my doing. Now, the revolution, just so you know that he's talking about, is not a bloodshed. He's talking about the revolution of light. The definition of a revolution is a purposeful overthrow. Yes. God is purposely overthrowing the darkness, the corruption, and the evil. That's why he allowed 2020 to take place like it did. Amen. All right, let's go to slide three. This is powerful. Watch how I irritate even the media where I will shake one. I'll shake them so violently, says the Lord, that they'll be sold. I think that happened. Didn't one get sold? Well, I think CNN shut down one of their... Yeah. It's Sports Illustrated folded. Yeah. Sports Illustrated, yeah. I mean, I don't even know how they stay in business. Nobody even watches them anymore, except those that have been under their Spell. Uh, their influence of looniness. And then it will be raised up with a different sound that shall come from the network. Watch how I, the Supreme God, shall irritate the Supreme Court. Do not think that it is political success that has caused things to be where it is now. It is my restraint. I will have the last say. America, you have entered into a season of me being your positive irritant. Okay, that's September 2016. And look at how much stuff has been interesting since that time. Incredible. We think it's all the devil. and God's messing with it. Watch how suddenly things will change and nothing will stop my hand. All right, I think this is important. Now, let's go to the next one because what I think we should talk about is the Supreme Court rulings that took place. How many of you saw what happened? Nine nothing. I thought that was good. Uh, by the way, I want to make a pitch for something. Talking about nine nothing. You got to watch Get Real with Hank tomorrow. So yes. I came in in a busy week and I filmed Get Real with Hank. And I have a, a, a surprise uh, guest judge. His name is Justice Josephus Joseph Justin Jared Paul Justice. <laughs> He kind of, I'll imitate him. He kind of sounds like this. Joseph Justice Jared Paul Justice. Okay. So you might want to be looking for him, and uh, he'll be showing up on Get Real. But let's talk about this. Look at uh, slide seven. Uh, this is from Sunday. The Spirit of God says, the lion is roaring, and he has roared. Do you hear the sound of his justice? By the way, that's the theme of OTH, okay? The lion's roar of justice is the sound that shall be seen, but it shall be heard and manifest in the earth. 
It is my time, and do not tell me that the earth is the enemies or the globalists. Do not tell me this earth is the rhinos or the liberals. This earth is mine and the fullness thereof. And I'll give it back to the remnant who've prayed, who have stood in the gap for just a little longer, that my glory shall cover this earth as the waters cover the sea, says the Spirit of God. I'm going to read one more, and then I'm going to open up for the panel. Slide 8. March 3rd, Sunday, 9 o'clock service. There shall be another sign that shall come. And I'll interrupt the courts of this land as court cases shall be put in disarray. They'll be put on hold and shall dissolve because they're, because they're touching something that I've anointed in who I've appointed at this time. He's talking about Trump. Therefore, watch your justice system. There shall come great, great discussion. Anger from a supreme ruling that is about to come. Yeah, less than who knows. <laughs> okay, this is right off the press. And God says, I laugh at it. And you will see with the ruling that I've laughed through them. Now, that's why it's interesting it was 9-0. If it was 8-1, it would be hard to convince people that it was a unanimous God laughing through them. But he did. And it is my ruling that shall stand through them, that shall set this thing in order. That's why it was 9-0. They don't have a say. In order that men and women alike, both on the court now and in the earth, shall not be able to manipulate to have their way that cooperate with evil forces. But they will see that I have my way. I shall cause my case to rest. I will cause my case to be stayed. God is listening to this servant right now. I had no clue what the word stayed meant. It literally means when a court uh, begins to stop and dissolve a litigation, especially concerning a party. Mm -hmm. He says, my case shall be stayed and my man, talking about 45, and my, my, and my man, it shall be stayed. It's going to dissolve. It's not going to go anywhere. So God was already saying. Now, and nobody knew yeah. that was coming. Yeah. I mean, that was a shock to everybody. Yeah. Now, you can so. show the show slide nine. It was. Anybody want to comment on slide nine? And then we're going to go into Colorado because God prophesied in Andrew Omax that this was going to happen. Yeah. Right out in the very place that they put it, God wanted our feet there so he could proclaim wow. it. Just like Elijah with the prophets of Bill, you have to get right on the Mount Carmel, man, and prophesy and, and, and stuff. So that's kind of cool. All right. So... Um, Look at slide nine. Is there anything you guys want to say to Yeah, Pastor, I just want to point out, you know, a lot of us kind of know the significance of this case, but to really put it in perspective, you know, a lot of us heard about, you know, Colorado had officially kicked him off the ballot and Maine had officially kicked him off the ballot and Illinois had officially kicked him off the ballot. But did you know, I didn't know this until we started researching for this prophetic pulse, that there were 36 states that had some kind of lawsuit wow. pending in process to try to get Trump off the ballot. Mm. Wow. 36 states. Wow. And so with this one court case, with this one 9-0 ruling, it dissolved and stopped and put on hold all of those cases. And you know, 9, 9-0, nine, oh, 9 is the number of Holy Spirit manifestation. Yes, you know it that? is. Yes, it is. There's nine fruit of the Spirit and nine gifts, right? Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Isn't that cool? That's true. So let's go on and let's look at slide 10. So let's look at Colorado. How many of you, you live in Colorado, you're watching, you live in Colorado? Look at what God said. This is interesting. So he sends us Flashpoint Live to Colorado. And Andrew Womack, I tell you, that guy is amazing. I think people who vote this way are stupid. <laughs> so anyway, he, he's a good guy. Uh, he's actually going to come here. I just have to uh, get the, the times. I'm waiting for the new tabernacle, and, and I told him we have to wait. But look at a ten, uh, or slide 10. Here it is. Look at Colorado. Let me make a play on where says the living God. I speak to you about Colorado, do meaning money, yes. for there has been much that has been by the hands of money, by the hands of money laundering, by the hands of handshakes and deals that have not been according to that which men have desired and what they voted for in your state, but has been planned by Colorado money. Wow. False money, corruption. But I say, I change your name. And I speak over you as I do America. For you call yourself America. I say United States. You say Colorado. I say Colorado. 
For you will do my will and you will do what I've asked and you will do the things that I've desired to raise you up once again. Look at February 9th again. The prophecy continues. And I'll cause the new to arise and I will take away the old for a great reform shall arise and men shall say, I remember Colorado. I remember those days, but now we are Colorado. We stand for justice. We stand for what is right. And that which has been legislated that you thought would be getting to be passed down upon other states. I mean, oh, he's talking about this. And would be a precedent and would be a protocol for others. God says, I will overturn. He did he or did he not? He did it. As I did the tables in the temple, your legislation. For I will rename you Colorado. And there's a great reform that's coming to you. But also this country says the living God. Amen. Isn't that incredible? All right. you know, you know, so I, I'm, I'm trying to set it up. All right, let's look at slide 12. God says, I've sent my trump card to, the trump, to trump the enemy. But now this day, this is December 6, 2017. But now this day, listen to the word of the Lord. This day marks a shift from Donald to Donald triumph, says the Spirit of God. For it marks a season now where the enemies who have tried to take him out and to resist and to cause trouble... There shall come against them one victory after victory mm. after victory. Folks, I've been on Flashpoint holding up the yes. feathers. God said, Hank, <laughs> this, awesome. is, this is, you got to understand sometimes. Uh, I loved what Mauro Murillo said one time on Flashpoint. He said, Hank has stood in front of this camera and we as the panel and we have spoken truth to you and it feels so lonely because everything opposite seemed to be happening and people just needed to be patient and let the word of the Lord keep coming. And now we held up the feathers as they were coming up with all these indictments before all of the stuff with the lady who got her fanny in trouble. Um, <laughs> right? The fanny, fanny Wilson, you know, whoever, you know, and, and the guy that was chasing her fanny and, and, and all that. So, but the feathers dropped and God said, this is exactly what's going to happen. So, all right. <laughs> Listen, they lie. You might as well tell yeah. the truth and be brutally honest. Listen, they're being brutally lying. Why don't you be brutally honest? It's true. Right? And if that offends you, Christian, because of mean tweets and, and things that we're saying, you, you don't understand the spirit of Elijah. Jesus said the spirit of Elijah has to come into the earth in Malachi chapter 4. It is truth and justice. And it is uh, it's righteousness and justice, truth and love. But you've got to stand. And, and Elijah mocked the false prophets, mocked what they were doing, said, is your God out going number two? So what he said, man, he, he, he didn't play. And that anointing, when it comes, it doesn't, it, it represents God and it represents truth. And when they are bold and blatant about, you got to push back. I'm not saying you be an idiot, you be on Christ like I'm simply saying, don't be afraid. To stand up and say it like it is, just like you, you just heard. All right, there you go. All right, let's look at this. All right, uh, there'll be victory after victory as things begin to shift now for the president, for this administration, and for you, my people, says the Spirit of God. All right, let's talk about the anointing of 45. This is important. So, Anthony, set this one up, slide 13. You can go ahead and talk about this one. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, pro uh prophecies that came to pass just from this one slide right here yes there are this one is from october 23rd of 2022 and uh as pastor hank was saying there was a lot that happened and actually a couple of these things these things happened in the same day i remember that because i think we were in green bay when that yeah happened, we were in we? green bay yep. which i'm never going back when it's when it's winter never <laughs> me either i've retired from it never too. there you go wusses <laughs> <laughs> well I will be I a mild weather. I don't disagree with Anthony. That was fine. <laughs> All right. Back to the actual holy All right. stuff. All right. So it says, uh, I just want to read the first part because just as a reminder of what has already transpired, this has already taken place. For there will be close calls, so they would say, of jets that would come to the very outer edges of your airspace. How many remember that happening around fall of last year? There are all these random jets and balloons and lions and tigers and bears. 
all these weird things just floating in the sky. Um, and there will be a missile test that will fill the air. And there will even be one missile with fire. That Notice shall, one missile. God's one missile. talking about one missile to pay attention. That shall cause men to fear and say, where shall this land? So you remember that errant rocket that went from Ukraine all the way into, well, I believe it was Poland, right? It was Poland. Landed in Poland. And, uh, you know, which everyone means was, rest, by the way, Poland which means rest, which means rest. And it didn't explode. It was actually a dud. I think they said, no, actually it did explode. Sorry. But what happened though, is just the fact that, you know, Ukraine blamed it on Russia, R Russia blamed it on Ukraine, Russia, Russia, Russia. Okay. So that happened. And it said, and what shall be the damage thereof? But God says, I, as the king of the air shall strike it down. And then they will say, what is this? 45 is flying his plane again. What does this mean? We must stop him. All right, stop there because you've got to understand when that missile came, that one missile, and they didn't know where it was coming from, where it would land, on the same day, Trump announced that he was going to run. Just like the prophecy, how it shifts. Did you see how it shift from a missile to all of a sudden talking about 45 and running again? All right, go ahead. Keep going. We must raise up further attempts that he may never be seated again. Further attempts. Oh, like let's uh, make up this thing with uh, uh, a dressing room that there were cameras and, oh, right. and then say that I know the exact dress I was wearing, which they didn't allow to be put in court. And she went and printed out a cover for and the year that she said that supposedly it took place, that dress wasn't even made. <laughs> You can't string your facts okay. together when you're lying. You know, and then you're, then you're, you're, you're there, there's, there's, there's no victims in the New York case of, with real estate, perfect records. They wouldn't even allow any uh, of the defense to bring anything. Yep. This, this is wrong. Yep. And, but God says, they'll, look at what he said. He said, They'll, they'll come up with further attempts and he may never be seen again. This is why you never Trumpers quit listening to the news. Yeah. And because I, I run into people. Oh, don't you know I'm not. He's got 91 indictments. Psalm 91 <laughs> over Donald Trump. <laughs> Thousands fall at his side. Ten yeah. thousands at his right hand. But it will not touch him. <laughs> Glory to God. There you go. Okay. <laughs> That's what I say. Come so, so, you know, you come of the night. You, I thought it was when I whistled at you. But anyway, here's the point. The, the point is, come on, God is telling us. And I sit there and, and, and so I say to people, do you watch the news? Well, yeah. That's the problem. Do you pray? Well, I mean, I said, I can tell you don't hardly pray. So you don't even know what God has said. You don't even know what he's saying. So you're going to listen to the news and miss your deliverance. For you and your children, <laughs> as quickly as things are up, you guys shouldn't be on a panel with me anymore. You're just <laughs> messing everything up. All right. And as quickly as things arise, they shall fall apart, for they will see it like feathers mm -hmm. that shall fall that have no weight. How many are seeing that? Yep. I'll blow upon it, says the living God. And then, if that is not enough, they'll say, now we will look to frame. <laughs> I can't stop Like laughing. look in the mirror, people. You can, you can just hear God going, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> God says, go ahead and frame. Frame your accusation. Frame your indictment. President Trump, if you're listening, God said, go ahead. Let him frame. Let him accuse you, your indictment. But you have left me out of the picture. Dangerous. But it shall be you who, who seek to do this yet shall be unveiled, exposed for the world to yeah. see. Can I just uh, say one yeah. thing to that? And if you remember the prophecy, you hear it, you can't even hardly hear me. And all of a sudden it comes forth like a roar. How many remember that? I do. And God began to prophesy about some of the things I'm going to show you. So he talked about how his righteousness and justice was coming. Malachi 2, I believe it's verse 7 or 17. One of those two, it has a 7 in it. It says, don't say justice will not come. And a lot of people keep saying that yeah. to me. Well, when are we going to see it? When are we going to see it? Don't do that. Don't yeah. say, where is the God of judgment? Right. So I want to show you very quickly. Let's go. I'm going to just read prophecies and we're going to comment. Okay. Because I want to get these in. So this is, um, this is from the conference here. 
And uh, let's go to the first one, 19. Ready? Let's go quickly. I'm just going to read them. And for you that are listening and watching, we'll come back and comment. Do you think that I've somehow ignored the injustice, the corruption, the evil, the things that have been deep stated and seated? No, says God. I've watched and I've waited for this time. For this is not your season, nor is it the seasons of the earth. It's my season. Therefore, the seasons shall blend together. And you shall say, it feels like spring. But then why is there summer heat? And why then does it get frigid cold? Oh, it's so cold. And why does it snow in this place and it has not snowed for decades? And why in the place where we escape the frigid cold, we're freezing? Next one. God says, I'm showing you that I am the God of the times and seasons. And so for a while, they will seem backwards. It'll seem one month, it'll be this way. Another month, it'll be another way. It will be that one day, it will seem as though it is hot. And then suddenly it's cold. How can the temperatures change this greatly? Nebraska the, it had the hottest, oh, I know. hottest day on record in February. The next day it snowed. <laughs> Texas, we're going to talk about that. God says, they're going to say it's climate control, it's global warming. God says, enough, my hand has been placed on the earth to show the earth that I'm the God of the times and seasons and the purposes that are under heaven. All right, let's go to slide 21. Soaring temperatures could shatter over 300 records to close out February. Kansas City could see 50 degree drop in 12 hours. Milwaukee sees 58 degree temperature swing in 16 hours. Um, slide 22. From balmy to burr. <laughs> okay, uh, what a difference 24 hours has made from record heat to brutal cold in Omaha. Wow, how many have seen that prophecy? Now let's go to the next one, slide 23. Let's talk about Texas because there's been these fires. All right, God says, slide 23, listen to me, February 6, 2022. Listen to me, says the Lord, for this shall also happen in Texas. You should be known as Texas because there shall come an attitude of legislation. Hello, this border thing. That yes, shall arise, and yes. they shall surely say, Do not mess with Texas, for I'll show you how a state should be governed, and I will make this a prototype throughout you, you United States. Go to the next one. This is really interesting. We're setting it up. All right, look at slide 24. Federal judge in Texas rules congressional passage of 22 spending bill, unconstitutional, uh, all of that. Let's go to the next one. Um, which is, what is the next one here? Okay, let's go to slide 25. This is very interesting. And then I'm trying to set up to give you guys to comment. Slide 25. All right. <clears throat> this is August 20, 2023. 20, uh, the enemy roars about <clears throat> like a lion to and fro throughout the earth. He's afraid of the Son of God and the movements in the past, the inspections, the justice and righteousness that are, are in the feet of Yeshua. For the foundations of the throne of the Most High is righteousness and justice. Do not think that the foundation is do not think that the foundation is in heaven. This foundation rests in the feet of Yeshua Himself. Wow. He is righteousness and He is the God of justice. Therefore, He moves, He walks among the earth at this time, because there are those like Simon the sorcerer. Who have brought forth lying signs, lying wonders, oh. counterfeits, deceiving the nations and the people through witchcraft. Look at the next one. This is very interesting. Pay attention. Is this one about the fires? Yes. Okay, watch this. How many know there's fires in Texas? Watch what God says about these fires. But God says, this is August 20th, 2023. God says, the countering has begun. And it is the sound of Yeshua's feet that is countering the lies, the wonders, the counterfeits, the propagandas, the agendas of man. And even as Simon, the sorcerer, you strange, strange fire. What are these strange fires that are in the earth? God is telling us it's getting ready to happen. Do you not understand, says the living God, that these fires have evil spirits through the hands of men? Mm -hmm. Man's hands have been upon the fires of North America. The fires of Hawaii and other places in the earth. Man's hands. And they've used the sea. They have used the sky. And they have used technology of the earth to harm the innocent. You listen to the sound of my feet as the God of justice and righteousness finds a flame of justice. That shall begin to expose and show who have had their hand in the destruction of the earth and the nations thereof. So he's saying these fires is man and technology cooperating with evil spirits. Wow. All right. 
throwing it out to you guys. Well, I want to say one thing, because I'm sure Terry has something in Pastor Matt as well. But if you'll notice the timeline of these fires, isn't it interesting that all of a sudden Texas has the largest wildfire in history two weeks after Governor Abbott was pushing to fight back from the on the border of Texas. Right, so time also, isn't it interesting that these Texas fires happened on the same day that this federal judge just ruled that Nancy Pelosi's federal funding bill from all of 2023 was unconstitutional? This is a big one in the making, folks. Pay attention. Here's what happened. In 2022, in December of 2022, Nancy Pelosi already had a bill, had, had a, well, enforced a rule that said that the uh, congressional politicians, the lawmakers, they could pass a bill uh, by proxy, meaning they didn't have to be there. The problem with that is anyone knows who runs a, a committee or an organization, you have to have a quorum. Yes. Quorum is a minimum amount of people present physically to conduct, to conduct business. Well, Congress did not meet that quorum the day that this $1.7 trillion federal fiscal package was passed. So what does that mean? This federal judge is basically saying all of the federal government's funding of 2023 is illegal. And then on the same day, we have these fires. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Wow. No, it, Cherry, there's Matt, a lot of interesting Brenda. things that you've got to keep your eye on. I find it interesting that this prophecy mentioned, you know, how Hawaii as well. And you see some interesting correlations between the Hawaii fire and this Texas fire where, oh, we don't know how it started. Then, oh, let's start. We'll, we'll start a lawsuit against the power company because that that's a believable excuse for why it started. Well, but God, how many remember that when God prophesied about you would see what are these beams, these laser beams coming from the sky? And then all of a sudden, Hawaii happens right after God prophesies this. Yeah. And the fact checkers, who are these fact checkers? They're guys that make, you know, 10 bucks an hour that tell you that you're wrong. Yeah. You're a conspiracy. I think they're opinion checkers. Opinion checkers. And notice there was some kind of light beam that they can't explain in Hawaii. And all of a sudden, some guy over his farm captures the same kind of strange green laser and they want to tell you oh that's just conspiracy well tell that to the guy who his camera shows it and others that you know so we we got to continue to pray for the holy spirit's yes. restraint and, yes. and and all of that now i want to talk about california real quick so god said something we were at uh, Cheyenne's church he's going to be also in tulsa make sure you come uh in just a couple weeks uh to tulsa for Flashpoint Live, it's going to be powerful. We're looking really forward to it. I'm um, carrying a strong word. I don't know if that's where I'm supposed to deliver it, but I just know God's going to speak. Um, but this, this is really interesting because uh, this was at Cheyenne's. This is slide 27. I want you to pay attention to something. God prophesied right after um, we left that there would be rain that would begin to fall and floods that would begin to rise in California. They had had a major drought. I mean, after, after we left, in fact, after that prophecy, the next night it starts raining. They're like, what's going on? It hasn't rained. If you remember, Jen, I think you were there. And then all of a sudden it just starts raining. But listen to this one. Uh, is this a good one? Uh, I'm going to talk about the rainbows. Okay, this one is interesting. Yes. Okay, yep. God's trying to show us. He's trying to give us hope. Okay, this is slide 27. You will look and you will see the rainbow in places of deep destruction. And why would it be that this rainbow will appear over places that men say is dark, it's evil, it's corrupt, or this is the history of our country. God says, I shall remind the people that even though there is evil, I've heard the prayers of a few who've cried out to me and they've said, God, would you remember your covenant? Would you honor that which has been dedicated and given into your hands? And I have said, yes. And so I'll show the power of my covenant and I'll show you the power that I have kept my word and I watch over it to perform it. So look to the signs of the rainbow. It'll not just be one. Can there be that which they say is a triple rainbow? Oh, wow. Now, this is in California. Look at slide 33. This happened in California. Yeah. Yeah. A triple rainbow. Wait, wait, that's one. Where's the triple rainbow? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's there. It's there. You can't see well, it. We have to mention, June too, 13th. that other rainbow on the left is over Alcatraz. So if you look at that, go back to that prophecy and what it just said, that's to me is what really catches your attention is in that prophecy on slide 27, it says, you will look and you will see the rainbow in places of deep destruction. And why 
Why would it be that this rainbow will appear over places that men say is dark, is evil, is corrupt, or this is the history of our country? Because God says, I shall remind the people that even though there is evil, I've heard the prayers of a few, that's you guys, who have cried out to me and they have said, God, would you remember your covenant and would you honor that which has been dedicated and given to your hands? And now you've got a rainbow over Alcatraz. Praise God. Yeah. Well, and I also Praise think God. that's why Paula Deans, that vision, I think the guy from California was part of that vision. They're trying to set things up for, and don't interpret what I'm not saying. I'm just telling he was in the vision. Uh, you know, because God's hand is on California. He's going to turn us around. Look at slide. Um, Slooky. <laughs> I'm hungry, Brenda. I want meat. Oh, man, I'm thinking about food right, now. I want right. fried chicken. I think you're right. Let's go get some fried chicken, Brenda. All right, slide. Usually we do Mexican. But slide 58. All right, watch this. March 6, 2022. I'm going to read these very quick, and then we're going to bring this thing to a fast close. This is not the time, March 6, 2022. This is not the time of the war, wars to end all things. But it is the time to end certain wars that have been raging in the spirit realm over the earth, over you, United States, that there shall be such a sound of freedom that shall arise. Wow. Okay. So that's, that's, that's cool. All right. Let's go to the next one. Uh, slide 59. This is the hour where God declares from his throne. I say to you, God will not be mocked. I will not be mocked. I say enough is enough for the enemy will desire to bring fear, to create diversions and false information. But God says he'll use the might, the militaries, the weapons of the nations. He will speak of rumors of nuclear war. And these things will make it look as though, uh, maybe he's talking about the enemy will do that, right? God says, okay, the enemy will use uh, to, to try to make it look like rumors of nuclear war. And these things will make it look as though that this is the end, that this is the war of all things, as there will be a certain sound that shall begin to fill the airways. But God says, do you understand propaganda? Do you understand how the enemy is using everything he can to get you to believe, to get you to be deceived into thinking something that really isn't? And God says, when they show the might of their armory, when they speak words and threats, pay no attention to the Goliaths that will rise and show show their threats and speak their threats. Let's look at uh, slide 60. Um, uh, and my plan shall stand in the earth to raise up one who they said he causes war. But yet when he was in office, there was no war yet only to the deep state. But not only shall he win the battle over the deep state, but he shall rise up in a place, says the living God, as a peacemaker in the earth that shall carry my anointing and my presence to bring about a restraint, a refrain among the nations that America shall be raised up greater, says the living God. And the nations shall come into their destiny for this time. For it is not the time that the battle of all ages shall arise. But no, this is the time, the reason that I've withheld my son, that I may receive the precious fruit of the earth that I've longed for. The enemy is trying to sow tares of war. God says, no, I shall receive my harvest. Praise God, yes.